Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope to which we were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Peace be with you. And also with you. Please sit down. Welcome one and all to church this morning. It may be a dreary morning out, but no doubt your hearts come full of joy to join with Killian and Finn on this uh, confirmation day. And that, of course, is the first reason that gives us joy. I wasn't primarily thinking of the rugby. <laughs> I was thinking of you too. But of course, the rugby gives us joy as well in spite of the... Uh, in spite of the rain. You're all very, very welcome, and I hope uh, that as things begin to open up again, uh, I won't say after the pandemic, but we're a little more relaxed now than we were at confirmations uh, in recent years, uh, and I hope that you will enjoy the service, and as I say, relax. I always say to the candidates that there's no reason to worry because I tell them exactly what we're going to do uh, as we go along, and that any of the hard questions that I need to ask will be put to the grown-ups. <coughs> Otherwise, everybody can enjoy themselves. Every year I choose a hymn or a song which we teach the uh, young people at our confirmation morning, uh, which was several weeks ago, and uh, that hymn or song is sung at all the confirmations between now and July. So in every parish, our next hymn, our next song is their song, as it were, for everyone in Cork, Cross, who's been confirmed in 2023. And so I invite you to uh, sit during it and we'll sing it reflectively uh, as we prepare for the service today.
So Killian and Finn, if you would stand up, please. And we ask your supporters to stand with you, parents and sponsors, godparents. And they, these people have journeyed with you to this point. And I want to thank them for, I was going to say setting a good example, but looking at some of them, I'm just wondering. <laughs> No doubt they've taught you many things in life. And so I have two questions now to ask you, which you answer together. Have you been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Are you ready with your own mouth and from your own heart to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? And to everybody in the congregation, I say faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord adds to our number those whom he calls. People of God, will you continue to welcome these candidates and uphold them in their life in Christ? With the help of God, we will. Let us keep a moment of silence. And in the silence, let us draw together all the prayers that are in our hearts and minds as we come to church this morning. Not just for Killian and Finn and their families, but remembering our loved ones in every generation and also bringing to God the various concerns in our community and in our world that call for our prayers. Heavenly Father, by water and the Holy Spirit, you give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. Guide and strengthen us by that same Spirit that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love and grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we have our first reading. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably, he said. Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Sure, the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not, look, does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him here, for we will not sit until he comes here. And then he, he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and he had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then in the presence of the Lord, and the spirit, the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then sent out and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. 
but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, that first reading brings back memories to me of many, many, many years ago. And every time I hear it, I think of one. Uh, as vicar choral in the cathedral, I was responsible for the pastoral care of the choir. And all I can say is that some of the most important things I've learned in life have been from children or young people. It's no wonder that Jesus sent them off as an example of the kingdom of God and said that we were to receive uh, the kingdom of God when we were child. The choir that really well, in the job that I had, I had to, as well as organized fun activities for the uh, choir boys and there were about 30 of them and their brothers and sisters and so on and annual cool trips as well as doing that I was responsible for teaching them and preparing them for confirmation like you were today uh, and um, I was also responsible for paying them they got 50 pence a week less fine there were five things like uh, talking during the sermon. And there were five for um, not having the correct dress and all of that sort of thing. Mm. And uh, I won't tell you what the fine was for passing a mouse up and down uh, the road uh, during the service. There were all sorts of things that choristers got up to. And there was one head chorister who suits the light to pick up. Walked there past from his home, and we bring him down. Gary was his name to the cathedral uh, uh, most Sundays. We pick him up and we bring him to the cathedral. And he eventually became a head pastor. And would you believe that one of the other things I had to keep an eye on was their haircuts of all people. <laughs> of all people, I had to keep an eye on their haircut. But also uh, the way they dressed. And they were all required to wear clean black shoes and white shirts and so on. So the standards were high and, and Gary anyway once on the church in red leather shoes. Red dot markers. And of course when we got to the people I had to say to him, what's with the shoes? You're the head chorister, you're supposed to be setting an example for all the other boys. And what did he say to me? He said, Paul, the book of Samuel, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> and that was today's reading. And I never hear that reading without thinking of Gary and his red shoes. The choristers are all over the world now in all sorts of places doing all sorts of things. But that's what reminded me of them. And time and place are very, very important. And you remember, I hope, your confirmation today. You remember reading that reading and you think of Gary as well. And to mark the time and place, you will, of course, get, um, you, uh, Canon Willoughby has prepared for you your certificate with, and on it will be the date, and the date will say the 19th of March, uh, Sunday, March the 19th, 2023. And I was thinking about this yesterday because I was clearing uh, my case out for the confirmation, and I found my own confirmation card, and see, see how miserable they were. <laughs> <laughs> we're much more generous with cards now. And there's my card, um, signed by Bishop Perdue. And a tiny little card, uh, 26th of May, 1974. And I was going to put it back to where it belongs uh, in, my, uh, in my house and with all the other things from our family of this kind. Uh, and then I said, no, I'll bring it. 
to you two. And the date is sort of interesting and important, isn't it? Uh, over recent years, I had my own father's card and I was talking about his confirmation during the Second World War and how he was confirmed more or less the day the siege of Stalingrad ended. And here our focus all these years on is again on that part of the world. 26 of May, 1974. How many people here remember 1974? A number of us. And what was significant, there were all sorts of things going on then in 1974. Um, there was an oil crisis And there was a shortage of fuel. And my father drove for a living. He had to come to places like Bantry and Skibberine and Castletown there from Port. So he needed fuel for the car. And I remember that winter. Uh, I remember that winter. But in those cities, you just didn't buy any old garage that you passed because they had nice chicken rolls or whatever. <laughs> you were faithful to one garage. And it was well that you were faithful to one garage because when an oil crisis came, the garage owner remembered that and prioritized you. And my father, we used to go to a garage on the back of this road to a lovely man. And I remember going, I was 13, and going out in the middle of the night, sneaking out in the middle of the night with my father, because the garage owner knew my father needed the petrol to come to Bantry and Castletown, and we would sneak out in the night, and he'd secretly open the garage to fill up my father's car with petrol and to avoid the queues. That's my memory of them. There were all sorts of things going on in the world. In 74, the ESB announced they were going to uh, build a nuclear power station in We know what happened there. Um, a Turkish airliner crashed on a flight between Paris and London. I remember it very well because I was always interested in planes. And it was the biggest single crash in history up to then, about 360 people. And they discovered afterwards that it was down to the catch and the luggage compartment that somebody had to put the catch on to the luggage compartment. People remember that? Some of you remember that. I always try to say that some of you were older people and that the catch someone's eyes discovered that they're, uh, they're not as old as I. And Erskine Childers was President of Ireland and Liam Cosgrave was Prime Minister and tragically the Northern Ireland Troubles were in full swing. It was the year of the Dublin and Monaghan bombings. So I only mention that because we're, we heard in the gospel that Jesus commands us to love and we, we do our loving and we do our being a Christian at a particular time and place. You know, uh, being a Christian is, you know, it's not remote from what's going on in society and in the world and now we live our Christianity in response to what's going on. And that's just the way it is, you know, love one another. For example, when I was confirmed in 1974, I don't think any body, any ordinary person, yes, there were scientists, but I don't think any ordinary person in 1974, you'll probably contradict me now, uh, lay awake at night worrying about climate change. scientific agenda since the 19th century. There's been a Swedish guy writing about it in 1896 about how fossil fuels would warm the surface of the earth and how it would affect us. And he won a Nobel Peace Prize. But I don't think when I was confirmed that we were worrying about it. Your generation are concerned about it. A different time and a different place. And that is why that is why um, at confirmations this year, we're focusing on the fifth mark of our mission, which is about uh, protecting the earth and sustaining the earth as part of our duty as Christians. And last August, at Lambeth Palace, the Archbishop of Canterbury launched what was called the Communion Forest, and you were told about this in the confirmation morning. Uh, all around the world, we're trying to plant or to do our bit 
for the environment and for diversity, and it's called the Anglican Communion Forest. And you too, as it happens, because this is the first confirmation of 2022, you will be getting the first, these are not them because I'm post them to you, you will be getting the first two cards that are unique in the whole of the Anglican Communion because no other bishop has done it this way. And I got permission to do it. And we have made them, we've taken the international thing about the Communion Forest and we've made them local. And so you'll be able to have those as a memory. And the other thing we've done is we've entered into partnership with Reforest Nation. This is a guy in Ireland and a team of people who work to plant trees and their goal is to plant a million trees uh, by, I think, 2026. And I have bought a forest of 300 trees, which will be planted between now and 2024, well not now because it's a bad time to plant trees now, but between 2023 and 2024, and a forest of 300 trees is going to be planted in Ireland on behalf of those of you who are uh, confirmed in 2023 in Port Fairness, and you will get the certificate as you well. have. And I'll be sending those to Canada Willoughby. I understand that they arrived in the office after I left on Thursday uh, from the printer, but they will come to you. You can decide who gets the first one and who gets the second one. <laughs> you let you all okay. But really the point I want to make is that our Christianity isn't unconnected with the things that concern us in the world. I mean, Jesus said, uh, you know, go in love. It wasn't just something nice or good. Sorry if I offended anyone who's wearing red shoes. <laughs> so please stand and sing the hymn as the deer.
congregation now, you're invited to sit or kneel to pray as we confirm Killian and Finn. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who has made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, whose Son Jesus Christ was crucified and rose again to break the power of sin and death, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your Holy Spirit by whom your servants have been born again and made your children. Grant that in the power of the same Holy Spirit they may continue to grow in the knowledge and likeness of Christ. Increase in them your gracious gifts, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and inward strength, the spirit of knowledge and godly living, and fill them, O Lord, with the spirit of reverence for you. Killian, God has called you by name and has made you his own. Confirm, O Lord, your servant with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the seal of the Spirit. Finn, God has called you by name and has made you his own. Confirm, O Lord, your servant with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the seal of the Spirit. Join with me in praying. Defend, Defend O Lord, Lord, these your servants with your, your heavenly grace, grace, that they may continue forever. forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until they come to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for your servants upon whom we have now laid our hands after the example of the apostles to assure them by this sign of your favour towards them. May your fatherly hand ever be over them. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. Lead them to know and obey your word and keep them in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue to kneel or sit for our prayers. As a royal priesthood, let us pray to the Father through Christ, who ever lives to intercede for us. Reveal your kingdom among the nations. May peace abound and justice flourish. We pray especially this morning for all those places where there is war and for all those hundreds of thousands of people who have been displaced. We give thanks for our own community here and for the wonderful welcome we have shown as a community to those coming to live here from Ukraine. We also bless all those ministries of care and relief who have reached out to Turkey and Syria with kindness and love and generosity. Your name be hallowed, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Send down upon us the gift of, your, of the Spirit and renew your church with power from on high, especially this diocese, Paul, our bishop, and all who work and live in this parish. Your name be hallowed. Your Deliver the oppressed, strengthen the weak, heal and restore your creation. Enable us, through our gifts, our times, and our talents, 
to be instruments of healing and love for Mother Earth in whatever capacity or sphere of influence we live and work. Your name be hallowed, your kingdom come. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the church on earth, we join our prayers with all the saints in glory. Your name be hallowed, your kingdom come. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
through faith that you may be rooted and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. The God of all grace who calls you to his Christ Jesus our Lord establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in the light of Jesus Christ.